I'm Sharon Bill. This last week has been a half term week, which for most teachers means a week off or certainly a week off from teaching. And certainly here in the UK, it's a holiday week with all of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. For me, this last week has actually been a week of solid theory work, just tucked away here under the camera at the desk with the blinds down. And I don't say that with any any thought of complaint at all because I have really, really enjoyed it. I have really enjoyed myself and to me that is just a week of great times. Of course, I've done other things, I have other responsibilities, but that's been the mainstay of my week's holiday. And it reminds me of a comment made to me years and years and years ago when somebody said to me, you must like music a lot, you must like music an awful lot because music is your job and it's your hobby as well. Do you do anything else? Don't you get sick of it? I find it hard to create distinctions and boundaries between work and play because I enjoy music. Yes, it's my job and in a sense I find it hard to kind of accept when I hear myself saying that because yeah, yes, it is my job and you know, I teach now six days a week and then I do theory lessons and I do recording and I do all, all, all sorts of other things on the outside of that. But just saying it's a job seems very compartmentalised to me. You know, I've always taught a little bit right from when I was 16, 17 in that, yes, yeah, I play piano. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, do you want to play? I'll show you. Oh, I don't know. Let's look at that together. And I've always done little bits of lessons or taught and it's just grown and developed from that really. So yes, it is my job, but I don't sort of think, phew, thank goodness I finished work. No more music for me now until whatever o'clock tomorrow. And, and it makes it feel like a, a sort of a clock on, clock off kind of thing. And I just don't find it easy to do that at all. I don't want to do that. So yes, it's my job. I think I can kind of accept that. But then outside of that, yes, I sing in a choir. And so it's music for a sort of purely enjoyment purposes. But you know, that's hard work. It's really hard work. I come home from choir uh, of an evening and I'm utterly exhausted because I've, you know, you're sitting up straight, you're using your diaphragm, you, you, you're working your muscles, you're concentrating, and I'm really trying to give 110%. And so I'll come home utterly exhausted and starving hungry. But you know, I've really enjoyed singing especially now we're singing Vienne, Messe Solennelle, and I, I just love it. It's the most beautiful work ever. I'm so happy that we're singing this again. So that is, yes, it's hard work, but by no means is that a, an unpleasant task for me. But even outside of that, in my social life, I'll sort of go and visit a friend and we'll have a coffee and we'll inevitably do music of one sort or another, we'll be going through some theory just because I want to do it and we'll be looking at an opera score or we'll be sort of looking at a piece of music or saying, shall we have a go for this on the recorder? And I'm always wanting to sort of fiddle and faff with lots and lots of different things. So yes, I play piano, that's my main instrument. I play flute, but that's not enough. I, I, you know, that's not enough. And so I've started playing recorders. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this recorder exam. I've been fiddling around on the fringes of this for long enough. And it's taken me a while because treble recorder fingering is completely at odds to the flute fingering that I've grown up being accustomed to. But I know I want to do that. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. So, you know, as a, as a sort of a jolly, me and my friend are designing a, a sort of a recorder programme and would you mind accompanying me? Let's do this. And that's my idea of a socialising good time. And then I've always had this long, long held regret that I never did classical singing. And I do wish that, I do wish that I'd had the opportunity to do that. And I remember being at college and I used to hang around with this girl who was doing opera singing and feeling so, so jealous in a sense. And, and I never had the gumption to say, I'd like to do that. Please can somebody give me lessons? Here, 
I'll pay. What a, you, you know, why didn't I even think to do that? And it's like, well, it's never too late. I'm going to do that now. And so I find myself looking through all sorts of vocal scores and thinking, oh my days, do you think I could learn how to sing German? I, I mean, you know, just the thought of singing solo is terrifying enough, but no, no, I want to do it. And so of an evening, I'll be going through different maybe YouTube clips or, or listening on different playlists and finding all of these different vocal works and choosing them. And, you know, that's my idea of a good time. You know, it's a bit of a busman's holiday, isn't it? And, and I know that sometimes people say to me, Sharon, you work too hard. You've got to stop. You just, you're always working. I said, well, that's not true at all. And it's, it's very pedestrian in many respects. I guess, you know, there are other things in life. So yes, I do do other things. So the garden needs weeding and we've decided to grow some veg. And mind you, that's a bad mix, isn't it? When you're doing gardening and then you come to do piano lessons or theory lessons. And, you know, no, no matter how much I scrub under my nails, there's always a little bit of something there. And it's like, oh, you know, this is, this is not great, is it? And we're so used to seeing YouTube kind of beautiful gel nails or false nails and, and and I've just come out from the garden you know however I digress but even then let's say I'm in the garden and I'm weeding or I'm digging over a patch or something more often than not I'll have my phone in my back pocket and you know my earbuds in and I'll be listening to a playlist you know I've been listening to these songs would I like to sing these or these are the piano pieces that I'm playing or this is the opera work that I'm looking at and I'll be listening to, to that as I'm working. So even then I'm crossing boundaries and I think that's surely the point in a sense because why are you, why are you playing music if you don't enjoy music? I know that there are many things in life that we have to do just because you know you've got to do it. But surely music is one of those things that we do because we want to. And so wh why would I want to just think, that's my 20 minutes practice and that's, oh, I've done an hour and a half, that's, that's enough. <sighs> done, uh, you know, and it's good to rest, but that is not my go-to in everyday life. For example, I needed to take my mum to an appointment and I was going to be hanging around waiting for a good hour or more. And I just thought, well, you know, there's a McDonald's kind of two minutes down the road. So I'll drop, I'll drop mum off and I'll go down to the McDonald's and I'll take my grade four theory books and I'll do some preparation for the lessons that I'll be recording this week. And I'll sit in McDonald's and I'll, I'll do that work while I'm sitting waiting. And that wasn't a burden to me at all. You know, I was thinking that'd be a really good opportunity to just have a good hour, undisturbed time. And how nice if you can be sitting with a coffee and doing a bit of music theory at the same time. I'll be as happy as anything. Yeah, you go and then just ring me when you need picking up. And actually it made me remember, it was like this weird time warp where the irony of history sort of turns back on itself because years and years and years ago when I was teaching my children their theory homework we were working through the theory books and so for a bit of a change I'm thinking well that's you know we've, we've got an hour or so let's just make something jolly out of this and so we go to McDonald's and take a theory homework and just spend uh, an hour having like theory music lessons in McDonald's no doubt with a coffee and a donut or something like that. Not the healthiest music theory lesson, is it? And, and so I was sitting there in McDonald's and I was thinking, this is very strange. I used to sit and do this with my children and now I'm sitting doing the very same things all again on my own. And I sent my daughter a, a message saying, look at the irony of this, hey. But it just proves my point. You know, there are no distinctions. I love my subject. I love to teach my subject. That's just blossomed and grown. And I feel, I feel slightly strange. I know, yes, it's my job. It, yes, it is. But I've grown into it. It's, it's my hobby. It's my pleasure. It's my go-to. It's my choice. Why wouldn't it be? And it's no good saying, well, I'll say I'm a musician or I'll be happy when I can play this and when I can do this. It's great to have goals. And so, yes, always keep working towards those goals. But surely it's about enjoying the journey, 
rolling your sleeves up, immersing yourself in the subject, enjoying every ounce of what you do. Yes, you've done your music practice, great. Whatever instrument it is you're playing, let's say you're playing a piece of, a piece of bark or some foray or something like that, and then you'll think, well, I've done, I've done my practice, you know, well done me, that's good, that'll, that'll do for today. But, you know, I think I'm going to just find out about, about the composer or about the title of the piece. You know, what is an echosace and when was Bach alive or when was Foray alive or what other things did they compose? And just be interested in the subject. Why not? Why not? I just think, you know, let's enjoy the journey. Don't worry about boundaries of done this, done this. Just, just enjoy the journey. And I'm so happy that I can finally extend my love of the subject by offering lessons online too and, and so it's like yes yeah, spread the joy and, and let's enjoy this thanks for listening bye